My name is Timothy Wani, and I would like to talk to you about the structure and function of water. In 2015, I was invited by Gerald Pollock, discoverer of the so-called fourth phase of water and author of the groundbreaking book Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life, to share my research with a gathering of top scientists at the 10th Annual Conference on the Physics, Chemistry, and Biology of Water held in Varna, Bulgaria. That's me at the podium on the upper left and Luc Montagnier front and center. More about him later. It was a truly inspirational conference from which I learned a great deal. The views of the Black Sea from my room weren't too shabby either. Following are a few questions my research is attempting to answer. Could the structure of water be the source of disease rather than a mere symptom? Could water be structured in order to prevent or even reverse disease? If so, how would healthy water differ from sick water? How would we go about objectively quantifying this difference? Let's ask Richard Feynman. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First we guess it. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what would be implied if this law that we guessed is right. Then we compare the result of the computation to nature with experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it is wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. Immediately after my presentation in Varna, I was approached by Dr. Montagnier with some kind words of encouragement. It looks like I'm about to punch him in the nose, but I can assure you I was merely excited. And here's photographic proof that all was and is well between us. I began my strange journey into water about ten years ago when I stumbled upon the writings of a world-renowned doctor and expert in bioenergetics. At the time, I was reading heavily on the intersection of health and energetic fields, principally, though not exclusively, on electromagnetic fields. He had written a brilliant monograph reviewing major developments in the field of electromedicine, covering the interrelatedness of several scientific pioneers, such as Gilbert Ling of the Ling Induction Hypothesis, Royal Raymond Reif, inventor of the Reif Microscope and Related Cancer Therapy, and Dr. Max Gerson, who developed a cancer diet, just to name a few. Because of the depth and breadth of knowledge he demonstrated by interconnecting so many major discoveries across so many seemingly disparate fields, I knew he could not be faking it, and so I contacted him. We corresponded via email for some time, and then eventually arranged to meet in London. That meeting set me on a path of exploration and discovery that continues to this day. I initially honed in on Rife technology because it seemed to me the most amenable to direct measurement. I also focused on Rife because I was never satisfied with what I suspected were overly simplistic explanations of just how Rife technology worked. And truth be told, I'm not entirely convinced that Rife really understood it either, despite being a truly unique genius who was obviously able to make good use of his discovery. I had long suspected that so-called biological water, water in the body, behaved very differently from that of bulk water. In 2003, mainstream scientists were dragged kicking and screaming toward accepting this, owing to the discovery of aquaporins by Peter Agre, for which he won the Nobel Prize. Aquaporins are protein structures that selectively conduct water molecules in and out of cells, while preventing the passage of ions in other solutes. Genetic defects involving aquaporin genes have been associated with the development of several neurodegenerative diseases. In light of the growing body of evidence on water structure in biology, I became increasingly convinced that the mechanisms governing biological water were quantum, or perhaps even subquantum, in nature. Pentagonal water clusters have been experimentally identified as key to the hydration and stabilization of biomolecules. Such examples indicate the tendency of water pentagons to form closed geometrical structures at biomolecular interfaces, including amino acids and nucleotides. 
The restructuring or clustering of water molecules may even determine biological cell architecture. Approximately 70% of the human body is water by weight. Much of that water is believed to be restructured or nanostructured, which affects biomolecular processes including protein stability, enzyme activity, and proton transfer. Some diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, type 2 diabetes, and cataracts are associated with the misfolding of proteins. Water restructured as nanoclusters of the above described type play a key role in the proper folding of proteins. The misfolding of proteins, making them dysfunctional and disease causing, is likely associated with the failure of water molecules to congregate in clusters that properly interact with the proteins. The development of drugs to treat such diseases should therefore consider the restoration of water clustering at the protein interfaces. There are also environments in biology where water molecules may be confined in linear instead of globular arrays. One example is the microtubule, a principal component of the cytoskeleton which are hollow polymeric cylinders approximately 25 nanometers in diameter composed of the protein tubulin. Microtubules are dynamic structures that help to determine biological cell shape and facilitate intracellular transport. Extraordinarily large electric dipole moments may lead to the quantum coherence or Bose-Einstein-like condensation of interacting water clusters confined to microtubules. Figure 3 left shows the microtubule structure. A hollowed out tube 25 nanometers in diameter consisting of 13 columns of tubulin dimers arranged in a skewed hexagonal lattice. Penrose 1994. Each tubulin molecule may switch between two or more conformations coupled to London forces in a hydrophobic pocket. Each tubulin can also exist in quantum superposition of both conformational states. Hameroff and Penrose, 1996. Now we're all familiar with the three classical states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. But scientists at the Oak Ridge National Laboratories have discovered that when it's put under extreme pressure in small spaces, water can exhibit a strange fourth state known as tunneling. The water under question was found in super small six-sided channels in the mineral barrel, which forms the basis of the gems aquamarine and emerald. The channels measure only about five atoms across and function basically as cages that can each trap one water molecule. What the researchers found was that in this incredibly tight space, the water molecule exhibited a characteristic usually only seen at the much smaller quantum level, called tunneling. This means that the oxygen and hydrogen atoms of the water molecule are delocalized and therefore simultaneously present in all six symmetrically equivalent positions in the channel at the same time. The group added that the discovery could have implications wherever water is found in extremely tight spaces such as in cell membranes or inside carbon nanotubes. Only in the beginning of the 1980s did the scientific community of Russia begin to appreciate the importance of the theory of so-called dynamic torsion fields. The ensuing theoretical and experimental work allowed Russian scientists to make new fundamental discoveries and obtain promising practical results. It was hypothesized that all known chemicals are distinguished by their own distinct torsion field signatures. Torsion fields appeared to differ from all known characteristics displayed by electromagnetic and gravitational interactions. For example, the property of torsion fields can make electric charges of the same polarity attract and those of the opposite polarity repel, the opposite of electromagnetism. Torsion radiation was thought capable of traveling in space billions of times faster than light. Its penetrating ability was thought to be as strong as that of neutrinos. 
in my own experimentation with torsion-like fields, I have consistently demonstrated differences in chemical reaction rates, reduced food spoilage, accelerated plant growth, alterations to the smell of various liquids as measured by high-speed gas chromatography, specific heat and combustion characteristics of fuels were altered, anomalous boundary layer effects of various liquids, more stable emulsions, improved taste and texture of various spirits, chocolates, and the natural sweetener stevia with encouraging implications for public health as a viable sugar substitute, just to name a few. Now hang on to your hats. Luc Montagnier is best known for his Nobel Prize for discovering the AIDS virus. But his discovery relating to DNA replication nearly caused a schism in science not seen since Galileo. Luc Montagnier has brought forth remarkable new evidence for a non-particle view of life. Let me repeat that for emphasis. Yes, you heard correctly, a non-particle view of life. The emission of low-frequency electromagnetic waves from bacterial DNA sequences and the apparent ability of these waves to organize nucleotides, the raw material of DNA, into new bacterial DNA by mediation of structures within water, thus demonstrating the interaction of living organisms with electromagnetic waves. This work has revolutionary implications for biology, extending the work begun in the 1920s by such figures as Alexander Gervich, who detected ultraviolet radiations emanating from growing plant cells. In experiments reported by Montagnier at the 2010 Conference of Nobel Laureates in Lindau, a tube of pure water, when exposed to a second tube emitting signals, was made to emit signals and then to cause DNA sequences placed into the pure water to assemble into sequences similar to those of the original emitting organism. Now comes the most remarkable step. The ingredients for synthesizing DNA by the polymerase chain reaction, nucleotides, primers, and polymerase, were added to the tube containing the pure water. It is expected that the PCR reaction should require the presence of at least one copy of the DNA segment which is to be reproduced to serve as an initial template for DNA amplification. This was not added, however. There was no DNA template from which to make a copy, only the Schumann resonance and the building blocks of DNA. So the next time you wish to make a photocopy on photocopy machine A, place the paper to be copied on photocopy machine B, then press the copy print button on machine A and see how far you get. The Montagnier DNA experiment was repeated many times under the influence of other frequencies, that is to say, other than the Schumann resonance, and only the Schumann resonance triggered the self-assembly of DNA. Since boundary layer dynamics play such a critical role in biology, I decided to conduct a series of straightforward experiments focused on the interaction of structured water with various hydrophobic liquids, with and without the addition of ionic surfactants, and what MIT researcher Stephanie Seneff calls surfactant mimics. According to Dr. Seneff, a number of medium chain fats and cofactors, e.g. lauric acid, capric acid, ascorbic acid, panthothenic acid, lipoic acid, and niacin, all share apparent membrane stabilizing properties. It is plausible to infer that they all act predominantly by lowering interfacial water tension. Bioactive polyphenols and polyketones represent other classes of surfactant mimics whose bioactivity and bioavailability may be significantly modified by sulfation. Resveratrol, curcumin, ascorbic acid, and the health-promoting phenols in coffee and chocolate can be sulfated and this may be the key to their biological benefits. Thus, we decided to combine structured water shown experimentally to lower interfacial